Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grumpy Snail Podcast, where the news is made up, and my opinion doesn't matter. I'm your host, Jonathan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. And my friend Jack here as I try to squeeze two minutes of information into a 15-minute video. If you like these videos, make sure you click that like button. Make sure you share these videos and also subscribe to my channel here. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, they can be put down in the comment section down below. I do respond to comments and criticisms, even if they aren't in the comment section. I upload every Sunday at noon, and possibly you may see a short every now and uh, then, so always check back to my channel. I do have a merch store, so if you're interested, go ahead and uh, check that out as well. Uh -huh. it, the link is in the description box down below. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about the FBI. Now, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is a domestic intelligence and security service of the United States. Uh, it is the principal federal law enforcement agency, and it operates under the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice and now the U.S. intelligence community. Because of this... Uh, reports to both the Attorney General and the Director of National Intelligence. All this is under the purview of the executive branch of the government, which is head by the President of the United States, Sir Joe Biden. <coughs> um, you know, but, uh, you know, after U.S. elected uh, King George Bush, it turned into a federal intelligence agency here focused on a counterintelligent or counterterrorism and a counterintelligence agency because, you know, uh, personal privacy uh, really isn't uh, a right in this country. Uh, unlike the CIA, who has uh, no law enforcement authority, which is, you know, probably why. They solve all their problems with assassination. The FBI can do less drastic things like killing the U.S. president. Uh, they can just lock you up uh, like they did uh, little old white ladies. You know, the dangerous people. So why are we talking about the FBI today? Well, uh, they have made their way into the news headlines uh, a little bit. Uh, but also, in major ways, multiple times... Uh, the last couple of years, and uh, today I'm going to cover some of the recent headlines, and uh, we will see how great this government organization is. Uh, an article published in the Washington Examiner reported this, quote, After weeks of refusing to even admit the FD-1023, blah, 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 record exists, the FBI has caved and is now allowing all members of the Oversight and Accountability Committee to review this unclassified record that memorializes a confidential human sources conversation with a foreign national who claimed to have bribed then Vice President Joe Biden, blah, 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 Comer said in the press release, uh, quote, Americans have lost trust in the FBI's ability to enforce the law impartially and demand answers, transparency, and accountability. He continued. On Monday, the White House dismissed claims from Comer that an FBI briefing on wrongdoing by the president and members of his family. Uh, Comer, blah, 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 I can't wait, blah, 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 just a bunch of nonsense. It's indicative of the need for further uh, investigation. So this has to do with the alleged corruption between, uh, you know, Ukraine, Joe Biden, is there evidence? I have no idea, I don't, you know, I'm just some guy, I'm just trying to you know, work my job and feed my family, right? But there's supposedly a document that proves there is, and a poll from Rasmussen found that 60% of likely voters believed that the FBI was involved in covering up Biden's family's alleged crimes. The survey found that 48% of the respondents thought a cover-up was very likely compared to 33% who didn't believe an FBI cover-up was likely. The poll also found that the FBI's fever favorability rating also falled underwater. For the first time, only 44% of likely voters said they had favorable views of the Bureau, which is down 60%, which is down from the 60% that the St. Paul had in 2018. Independents also had a, uh, held a harsh view, with only 36% uh, viewing the Bureau in a favorable light. That's not good. Now, why would this be possible? Well, it is reported that the FBI harbored this document since 2017. Uh, through all the elections and two impeachments, uh, 
you know, this isn't the only information that the FBI has harbored. We all are, we all, <laughs> we all are aware of the infamous Hunter Biden laptop. If you're not, you're not watching the news. You're not even watching the not news that's being posted on social media everywhere. Which, you know, at first, uh, they denied it existed. Then it was labeled Russian disinformation. Then Hunter Biden tried to sue the computer guy for releasing personal information. And then <laughs> Hunter copped to a plea deal for tax evasion charges and gun felony charges based on info, you know, in the laptop. Uh, it also contains, you know, alleged emails that prove Joe Biden lied uh, when he said he had no knowledge of his son's business dealings. I mean, he just said that he believed his son did nothing wrong after he pled guilty on doing illegal things. Now, I mean, I honestly, I don't think Hunter's hurting anyone by being a gun-owning crackhead. It's just disappointing that there's a, a two-tiered system of justice here. So why do people not trust the FBI? Well, remember the alleged terrorist plot uh, to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer? If you don't, I'll give you a little backstory. Now, Gretchen Whitmer is the governor of Michigan. And back in the fall of 2020, the FBI, FBI announced the arrest of 13 people suspected of orchestrating a domestic terror plot to kidnap the governor. Now, the reason that this is even more important is because this reinforces the narrative that the most important issue in the country is white nationalist extremism and far-right groups. Many of these men were members of a group known as the Wolverine Watchmen. What actually happened was the FBI infiltrated this group, uh, like they have many other militia groups at this point, and they plotted, paid for, and attempted to execute this plan. Turns out they have a history of doing this, uh, mostly with the Islamic terrorist groups. Of this terrorist group, the Wolverine Watchmen, 12 members uh, were FBI informants, and three were undercover agents. Of the people arrested, only six were federally charged. Uh, the rest faced state charges. Uh, two of the men pled guilty and offered to testify against the other members, uh, which didn't turn out so well because two of the other men were acquitted of all charges. Because even with the power of the federal government, uh, lies can only go so far. Uh, half of these trials are still pending because uh, your right to a quick and speedy trial, which is part of the Sixth Amendment, isn't really a thing. As we continue throughout these episodes, you'll see that most of your rights in the Constitution aren't. There's a documentary being made about this whole incident called A Kidnap and Kill uh, FB an FBI Terror Plot. Uh, and, you know, this incident didn't end here. Uh, in October, this this October surprise that happened, you know, in 2020, accelerated the governor's poll numbers through garnered sympathy. And despite her terrible policies, Gretchen Whitmer won her re-election. So she is the current governor of the state. That also wasn't the only side effect that Stephen Duantuano, uh, who was the special agent in charge of the Detroit field office, was promoted to the assistant director of the Washington, D.C. field office. Which brings us to January 6th, 2021. Now, the January 6th investigation, which has been an utter cluster... And should be no surprise, considering the info we've covered so far. Uh, first, uh, we'll talk about the uh, supposed pipe bombs placed at the RNC and DNC headquarters. 
and Washington, the reports of these bombs uh, pulled needed resources from the Capitol grounds. And those resources were sorely, sorely, sorely needed uh, because Nancy Pelosi turned down the offered National Guard by President Trump. And as for the pipe bombs themselves, uh, they turned out to be completely inoperable. And the supposed video footage of the bombs being placed was at a frame rate so low that they couldn't exist, implying that the footage itself had been tampered with. There are other issues as well. The, uh... The suspects, you know, in this case, such as uh, Ray Epps, who was shown on camera multiple times inciting violence but wasn't pursued by the FBI. There is the case of Marilyn uh, Hooper, Harper, Whopper, <laughs> who had her Alaskan home raided by the FBI in a case of mistaken identity. Uh, the identity of the labeled scaffold man uh, who climbed nearby scaffolding. Uh, before the riot even started uh, and was seen yelling orders uh, has yet to be identified. Now, a new report recently, uh, a new report was recently released in which the Metropolitan, Metropolitan, Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. has confirmed uh, to Congress that it had plainclothes officers at the Capitol during the January 6th riot and that at least one, at the very least one, was captured on video exhorting the crowd. Now, uh, uh, gov government representative Barry Loudermilk, who is a Republican in Georgia, told Just the News, quote, We know that it is one of the officers, and at one point, he is encouraging, and it appears he's encouraging. He's definitely helping people climb the scaffolding, and he's telling them, go, go, go. Why is an officer encouraging people to climb the scaffolding and go into the Capitol building? And secondly, why did the uh, the Metrogen uh, Politan Police support Port department. Why did why did they decide to put undercover officers in the crowd? Like why did they support that? Was there intelligence that they had that was or was not passed on to the Capitol Police? And what did the Capitol Police do with that evidence if they got it? You know, why are people still being held in prison without trial? While there are videos of police officers uh, opening doors and letting protesters in and giving them guided tours. The FBI now faces uh, accusations that the agency has become politicized uh, in cases involving uh, pro-life advocates and parents protesting at school board meetings and was involved in censorship following reports based on documents released by uh, journalist Matt Taibbi. Uh, by Elon Musk. You know, we're talking about the Hunter Biden laptop. Uh, in addition, Special Counsel John Durham released a report on the origins of the FBI investigation of allegations that the former President Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign colluded with Russia and found that the FBI, quote, did not and could not corroborate the claims from the now discredited Steele dossier. <sighs> There's so much wrong here. Will you be next on the FBI hit list? Now, as we know, the average American commits three felonies a day. So the old adage of, I'm not doing anything wrong, uh, doesn't really apply anymore. Does it? Well... If you're not sufficiently grumpy, then you're not paying attention. Because your 15 minutes are up. So the grumpy ramblings, 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 ramblings will continue. So make sure you turn in next week for another video. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, make sure you click that like button. Make sure you share this video and subscribe to the channel. 
tune in next Sunday at noon for another video. And in the meantime, watch out for the shorts and check out that merch store. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. God bless. And Godspeed.